Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon, 1 Samuel 2, 12 36, 3, 1 18. 1 Samuel 2, 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial, they knew not the Lord. What a very dreadful thing it was that these sons of a man of God, the sons of God's high priest, were not, themselves, sons of God, but sons of Belial, foul. Hearted, foul mouthed, foul living men, who knew not the very God at whose altar they served and in whose house they lived. 13, 14. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came, while the flesh was in seething, with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he struck it into the pan, or kettle, or cauldron, or pot and all that the flesh hook brought up. The priest took for himself so they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came there. God had appointed a proper portion for his priests so that they who ministered at the altar might live of the altar. But these wicked men were not content with the divine allowance, so they robbed the altars of God and showed such greed as to make the appointed sacrifices to be obnoxious to the people. 15, 16. Also before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of you, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently and then take as much as your soul desires, then he would answer him, No, but you shall give it to me now, and if not, I will take it by force. It is a terrible thing when God's servants are domineering and oppressive towards the people of God. They who should be the gentlest of all and the most self-denying of all must not talk as this priest's servant did, and he no doubt talked as the young men whom he served bade him talk. 17. Therefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. It is horrible when those who should make God great among men cause his service to be despised and abhorred. When those who should be the friends and servants of God act like his enemies, it is indeed terrible. 1824. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen effort. Moreover his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year, when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife, and said, The Lord give you seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah, so that she conceived, and bore three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now Eli was very old, and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. No, my sons. For it is not a good report that I hear, you make the Lord's people to transgress. That is all that the godly old man said to his wicked sons. He was far too gentle in his way of reproving them. He was evidently afraid of his own sons, not the only man who has been in the same predicament. 25. If one man sins against another, the judge shall judge him? But if a man sins against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding they hearkened not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. They had gone so far in vice and sin that the Lord did not mean to forgive them. They had transgressed so foully that he would permit them to go on in sin until they perished in it. 
2630. And the child Samuel grew on, and was in favor both with the Lord, and also with men. And there came a man of God unto Eli, and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of your father, when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an effort before me? And did I give unto the house of your father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Why did you kick at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honour your sons above me? to make yourselves fat with the chief of all the offerings of Israel my people. Therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house, and the house of your father, should walk before me forever. But I said it conditionally upon your good behavior. I installed you into the priest's office for life, and your sons might have continued in it after you if they had kept my commandments. 3036. But now the Lord says, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off your arm, and the arm of your father's house, that there shall not be an old man in your house. And you shall see an enemy in my habitation, in all the wealth which God shall give Israel and there shall not be an old man in your house forever. And the man of yours, whom I shall not cut off from my altar, shall be to consume your eyes, and to grieve your heart, and all the increase of your house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto you that shall come upon your two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas, in one day they shall die, both of them, and I will raise me up a faithful priest, that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind, and I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before my anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left in your house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray you, into one of the priest's offices that I may eat a piece of bread. The same sad prophecy that the Lord communicated to old Eli was also revealed in a very special manner to young Samuel. 1 Samuel 3, 1-13 Mr. Spurgeon preached two sermons on verses 9 and 10, see Sermons number 586, volume 10. The Child Samuel's Prayer and Number 2526, Volume 43, Speak, Lord, and the Child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days, there was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. And he ran unto Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I called not, lie down again and he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you did call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you did call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. 
Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came, and stood, and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that hears it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house, when I begin I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Take warning, fathers and mothers, by this experience of old Eli.